God is dead. German, Gott ist tot, also known as the death of God, is a widely quoted statement by German philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche. Nietzsche used the phrase in a figurative sense, to express the idea that the Enlightenment had killed the possibility of belief in God or any gods having ever existed. Others, such as proponents of the strongest form of the death of God theology have used the phrase in a literal sense, meaning that the Christian God who existed at one point, has ceased to exist. The phrase first appeared in Nietzsche's 1882 collection The Gay Science Die Frohliche Wissenschaft, also translated as The Joyful Pursuit of Knowledge and Understanding. However, it is most famously associated with Nietzsche's Thus Spoke Zarathustra also Sprach Zarathustra, which is most responsible for making the phrase popular. Other philosophers had previously discussed the concept, including Philip Mainlander and Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel. Topic. Discussion by Hegel Discourses of a death of God in German culture appear as early as the 17th century and originally referred to Lutheran theories of atonement. The phrase, God is dead, appears in the hymn, Ein trauriger Grabgissing, a mournful dirge by Johann von Rist. Contemporary historians believe that 19th century German idealist philosophers, especially those associated with Georg Wilhelm Friedrich Hegel, are responsible for removing the specifically Christian resonance of the phrase and associating it with secular philosophical and sociological theories. Although the statement and its meaning are attributed to Nietzsche, Hegel had discussed the concept of the death of God, in his Phenomenology of Spirit, where he considers the death of God to not be seen as anything but an easily recognized part of the usual Christian cycle of redemption. Quote dot. Later on Hegel writes about the great pain of knowing that God is dead. The pure concept, however, or infinity, as the abyss of nothingness in which all being sinks, must characterize the infinite pain, which previously was only in culture historically and as the feeling on which rests modern religion, the feeling that God himself is dead, the feeling which was uttered by Pascal, though only empirically, in his saying, nature is such that it marks everywhere, both in and outside of man, a lost God, purely as a phase, but also as no more than just a phase, of the highest idea, Hegel's student Richard Roth, in his 1837 theological text Die Anfang der Christlichen Kirch und ihrer Verfassung, appears to be one of the first philosophers to associate the idea of a death of God with the sociological theory of secularization. Topic. Role in the philosophy of Philip Mainlander Before Nietzsche, the concept was popularized in philosophy by the German philosopher Philip Mainlander. It was while reading Mainlander, that Nietzsche explicitly writes to have parted ways with Schopenhauer. In Mainlander's more than 200 pages long criticism of Schopenhauer's metaphysics, he argues against one cosmic unity behind the world, and champions a real multiplicity of wills struggling with each other for existence. Yet, the interconnection and the unitary movement of the world, which are the reasons that lead philosophers to pantheism, are undeniable. They do indeed lead to a unity, but this may not be at the expense of a unity in the world that undermines the empirical reality of the world. It is therefore declared to be dead. Now we have the right to give this being the well-known name that always designates what no power of imagination, no flight of the boldest fantasy, no intently devout heart, no abstract thinking however profound, no enraptured and transported spirit has ever attained, God. But this basic unity is of the past, it no longer is. It has, by changing its being, totally and completely shattered itself. God has died and his death was the life of the world. Topic. Nietzsche's formulation The idea is stated in The Madman as follows God is dead. God remains dead. And we have killed him. How shall we comfort ourselves, the murderers of all murderers? What was holiest and mightiest of all that the world has yet owned has bled to death under our knives, who will wipe this blood off us? What water is there for us to clean ourselves? What festivals of atonement, what sacred games shall we have to invent? Is not the greatness of this deed too great for us? Must we ourselves not become gods simply to appear worthy of it? But the best known passage is at the end of part two of Zarathustra's prologue, where after beginning his allegorical journey Zarathustra encounters an aged ascetic who expresses misanthropy and love of God. 
When Zarathustra heard these words, he saluted the saint and said, What should I have to give you? But let me go quickly that I take nothing from you. And thus they parted from one another, the old man and Zarathustra, laughing as two boys laugh, but when Zarathustra was alone, he spoke thus to his heart, Could it be possible? This old saint has not heard in his forest that God is dead. Topic. Explanation Nietzsche used the phrase to sum up the effect and consequence that the Age of Enlightenment had had on the centrality of the concept of God within Western European civilization, which had been essentially Christian in character since the later Roman Empire. The Enlightenment had brought about the triumph of scientific rationality over sacred revelation, the rise of philosophical materialism and naturalism that to all intents and purposes had dispensed with the belief in or role of God in human affairs and the destiny of the world. Nietzsche recognized the crisis that this death of God represented for existing moral assumptions in Europe as they existed within the context of traditional Christian belief. When one gives up the Christian faith, one pulls the right to Christian morality out from under one's feet. This morality is by no means self-evident. By breaking one main concept out of Christianity, the faith in God, one breaks the whole, nothing necessary remains in one's hands. This is why in The Madman, a passage which primarily addresses nontheists, especially atheists, the problem is to retain any system of values in the absence of a divine order. The Enlightenment's conclusion of the death of God gave rise to the proposition that humans, and Western civilization as a whole, could no longer believe in a divinely ordained moral order. This death of God will lead, Nietzsche said, not only to the rejection of a belief of cosmic or physical order but also to a rejection of absolute values themselves to the rejection of belief in an objective and universal moral law, binding upon all individuals. In this manner, the loss of an absolute basis for morality leads to nihilism. This nihilism is that for which Nietzsche worked to find a solution by re-evaluating the foundations of human values. Nietzsche believed that the majority of people did not recognize this death out of the deepest seated fear or angst. Therefore, when the death did begin to become widely acknowledged, people would despair and nihilism would become rampant. Topic. Nietzsche and Heidegger Martin Heidegger understood this part of Nietzsche's philosophy by looking at it as death of metaphysics. In his view, Nietzsche's words can only be understood as referring not to a particular theological or anthropological view but rather to the end of philosophy itself. Philosophy has, in Heidegger's words, reached its maximum potential as metaphysics and Nietzsche's words warn of its demise and that of any metaphysical worldview. If metaphysics is dead, Heidegger warns, that is because from its inception that was its fate. Topic. Nietzsche and others Paul Tillich as well as Richard Schacht were influenced by the writings of Nietzsche and especially of his phrase, God is dead. William Hamilton wrote the following about Nietzsche's view, for the most part Altizer prefers mystical to ethical language in solving the problem of the death of God, or, as he puts it, in mapping out the way from the profane to the sacred. This combination of Kierkegaard and Iliadi makes rather rough reading, but his position at the end is a relatively simple one. Here is an important summary statement of his views, if theology must now accept a dialectical vocation, it must learn the full meaning of yes saying and no saying, it must sense the possibility of a yes which can become a no, and of a no which can become a yes, in short, it must look forward to a dialectical coincidentia oppositorum. Let theology rejoice that faith is once again a scandal and not simply a moral scandal, an offense to man's pride and righteousness, but, far more deeply, an ontological scandal, for eschatological faith is directed against the deepest reality of what we know as history and the cosmos. Through Nietzsche's vision of eternal recurrence we can sense the ecstatic liberation that can be occasioned by the collapse of the transcendence of being, by the death of God, and, from Nietzsche's portrait of Jesus, theology must learn of the power of an eschatological faith that can liberate the believer from what to the contemporary sensibility is the inescapable reality of history. But liberation must finally be effected by affirmation. C. Theology and the Death of God. In this volume, pp. 95-111. Topic. New possibilities. 
Nietzsche believed there could be positive possibilities for humans without God. Relinquishing the belief in God opens the way for human creative abilities to fully develop. The Christian God, he wrote, would no longer stand in the way, so human beings might stop turning their eyes toward a supernatural realm and begin to acknowledge the value of this world. Nietzsche uses the metaphor of an open sea, which can be both exhilarating and terrifying. The people who eventually learn to create their lives anew will represent a new stage in human existence, the Ubermensch, i.e. the personal archetype who, through the conquest of their own nihilism, themselves become a sort of mythical hero. The death of God is the motivation for Nietzsche's last uncompleted philosophical project, the revaluation of all values. Topic. Nietzsche's voice Although Nietzsche puts the statement, God is dead, into the mouth of a madman, in the gay science, he also uses the phrase in his own voice in sections 108 and 343 of the same book. In the madman's passage, the man is described as running through a marketplace shouting, I seek God, I seek God. He arouses some amusement, no one takes him seriously. Maybe he took an ocean voyage? Lost his way like a little child? Maybe he's afraid of us non-believers and is hiding. Much laughter. Frustrated, the madman smashes his lantern on the ground, crying out that God is dead, and we have killed him, you and I. But I have come too soon. He immediately realizes, as his detractors of a minute before stare in astonishment, people cannot yet see that they have killed God. He goes on to say, This prodigious event is still on its way, still wandering, it has not yet reached the ears of men. Lightning and thunder require time, the light of the stars requires time, deeds, though done, still require time to be seen and heard. This deed is still more distant from them than the most distant stars. And yet they have done it themselves. Earlier in the book, section 108, Nietzsche wrote, God is dead, but given the way of men, there may still be caves for thousands of years in which his shadow will be shown. And we, we still have to vanquish his shadow, too. The protagonist in Thus Spoke Zarathustra also speaks the words, commenting to himself after visiting a hermit who, every day, sings songs and lives to glorify his god as noted above. What is more, Zarathustra later refers not only to the death of God, but states, Dead are all the gods. It is not just one morality that has died, but all of them, to be replaced by the life of the Ubermensch, the new man. Dead are all the gods, now do we desire the Overman to live, Topic. Death of God Theological Movement The cover of the April 8, 1966 edition of Time and the accompanying article concerned a movement in American theology that arose in the 1960s known as the Death of God. Although theologians since Nietzsche had occasionally used the phrase, God is dead. To reflect increasing unbelief in God, the concept rose to prominence in the late 1950s and 1960s, before waning again. The main proponents of this theology included the Christian theologians Gabriel Vahanian, Paul Van Buren, William Hamilton, John Robinson, Thomas J. J. Altizer and John D. Caputo, and the rabbi Richard L. Rubinstein. Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic. References Topic. Further reading Heidegger, Martin. Nietzsche's Wart God East Taught, 1943, translated as The Word of Nietzsche, God is Dead. In Holzwedge, edited and translated by Julian Young and Kenneth Haynes. Cambridge University Press, 2002. Kaufman, Walter. Nietzsche, Philosopher, Psychologist, Antichrist. Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1974. Roberts, Tyler T. Contesting Spirit, Nietzsche, Affirmation, Religion. Princeton, Princeton University Press, 1998. Topic. Precursors to Death of God Theology Benson, Bruce E. Pius Nietzsche, Decadence and Dionysian Faith. Bloomington, Indiana UP, 2008. Holub, Robert C. Friedrich Nietzsche. New York, Twain Publishers, 1995. 
Magnus, Berndt, and Kathleen Higgins. The Cambridge Companion to Nietzsche. Cambridge, Cambridge UP, 1996. Pfeffer, Rose. Nietzsche, Disciple of Dionysus. Canbury, Associated University Presses, 1972. Welshen, Rex. The Philosophy of Nietzsche. Montreal, McGill Queens UP, 2004. Topic. Death of God. Theology. Thomas J. J. Altizer, The Gospel of Christian Atheism, Philadelphia, Westminster, 1966. Thomas J. J. Altizer and William Hamilton, Radical Theology and the Death of God, Indianapolis, Bobbs Merrill, 1966. Bernard Merchland, ed., The Meaning of the Death of God, New York, Random House, 1967. Gabriel Vahanian, The Death of God, New York, George Braziller, 1961. John D. Caputo, Johnny Vatimo, After the Death of God, edited by Jeffrey W. Robbins, New York, Columbia University Press, 2007. Hamilton, William. A Quest for the Post-Historical Jesus. London, New York, Continuum International Publishing Group, 1994. ISBN 978-0-8264-0641-5 External links John M. Frame. Death of God Theology. The Joyful Wisdom, The Madman.